How, about, how much time have you spent on the, the new kickoff rule and trying to get a sense of what it's going to look like and who's going to fit where? Yeah. Um, the great thing about it, 31 other teams are in the same boat uh, in terms of that. And we have spent a lot, of, you know, a good amount of time and not taken away from other aspects because obviously it's a new rule. You have to get used to it. You have to do it more often than not. Um, but you still don't want to take away from the other aspects of special teams. But we have put some time into it, you know, a lot of long conversations between myself, Tyler, Joe P, and even just around the league. You know, I think that's the cool thing about the special teams community in the NFL. Everyone um, respects each other at a high level and bounce ideas off each other. Hey, what do you see here? How do you see it from peers and other other aspects of the of the league? So. It's going, to be, it's going to be exciting and interesting all at the same time because you really don't know what to expect because nobody's really even seen it. Even from an XFL aspect, there's still a lot of nuances from the XFL rules, what they implemented, to what we're trying to get done here in the NFL. So it's exciting time. Um, it's a lot of retraining for a lot of these veteran guys that are so used to NFL rules to now these new rules, kind of just relearning it from the ground up. You guys added a lot of players who have return experience. Is it more advantageous within these rules to have that many guys who have options? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously there's great options, especially here in, in May when you have 90 guys. Um, but it gives you, with all these new returners, an, an ability to evaluate all of them. And, you know, our scouting department does a really, really good job in terms of being bringing in players that help elevate our team. So giving all these guys an opportunity – not just kick return, but also punt return, you know, to see what they can do in a live setting is always going to be advantageous for myself as a coach. How is the style that you look for in a kick return different now than it was in the past? That's a great question. Who knows what the style is going to look like? Um, you know, what we're really trying to do is to, to eat up as many yards as possible going north and south and that of that nature. But, you know, going into this whole thing, we don't know what it's going to look like. Everybody else doesn't know what it's going to look like. So it's always nice to have different type of body types back there to see, all right, this this type of body type, this type of runner is getting more more uh, advantageous returns compared to this type, and maybe we'll lean towards that. But, again, as we, as we get forward with this new kickoff, kickoff return rule, um, it's going to be trial by error. It's going to be, hey, let's see what it looks like in a live setting going forward. Hey, we don't like this. All right, let's try it again. Oh, okay, well, we do like this. Let's keep this and let's add to this. So it'll, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting and fun all in the same while to to make sure this uh, us as a special teams unit helps this team out and move forward. What does it impact the non-returners? How do you see it impacting the non-returners and those guys, the nine guys lining up? How different do you think that's going to be? I think, you know, when you really peel back this whole thing, it's still kickoff, kickoff return. So in terms of that, okay, you're a non-returner. We still got to be able to be fundamentally sound when we're blocking because we do have a couple, you know, good returners back there. We have to use use this new kickoff return as a weapon. Vice versa on kickoff coverage, you still got to go cover these op opponent teams, these opposite teams of stopping them with some good returners. So um, it's still going to go back to day one ground uh, day one install of hey this is our kickoff coverage overview this is our kickoff return overview this is what we have to do this is what we expect out of this unit so again i think you know when you ha do have a couple good returns it takes those other nine guys to really lock in and be able to use this as a weapon from the kickoff coverage perspective on that um how often you know just in the past you had jake try to hit kind of like pop-ups and land them you know kind of like out of corner and not go for you know touchbacks or whatever and do you think that's a strength of his yeah, I think we all, you know, appreciate what Jake does, not just as a field goal kicker, but as a kicker in general. He's so talented in what he does and being able to, you know, get, you know, catch wind of this, hey, I have an opportunity to maybe work on a couple specialty kicks that we can use to help out our kickoff coverage unit. So Jake Braden also has a, a kickoff background. Um, him being able to, to do that also helps out. So Jake specifically, you know, he has a couple, you know, specialty kicks that he's been working on and things he can lean on as we move forward going against, you know, different returners of that nature. Are you yourself more excited to put together, like, interesting return packages or worried about what might come at you from a coverage standpoint? You know, I think when you put something new, you you first want to be the most intricate and, you know, the more, what's the perfect word to say this, you know, eye-popping thing. But I think for myself, we want to keep this, for the players to grasp 
simple enough and let's be good at that. Then we could add some different nuances of things of that nature, but we still also got to start from ground one. Hey, these are the new rules. We got to be great at these new rules because the one thing for myself or for us as a, as a team is these new rules, there's new penalties. And one thing we don't want to do is create new penalties and you know put our offense, put our defense in a bad predicament. So we got to start from that of understanding the rules. If you understand the rules, then you can move forward to your returns, to your blocking types, all that. So just starting from, from day one, ground one, hey, these are the new rules. we got to be able to be great at these, then we can do, uh, move on from that. Is, is Covey still the top option as punt returner? You know, Covey's a, a great option to have a, as a punt returner. And, you know, we, we've brought in some guys that do have some punt return abilities. You know, as we move forward, a competition usually breeds greatness. So having other guys out there, then also, you know, you get to see these guys. You know, if you remember last year from preseason, we had – we didn't have the greatest amount of numbers for punt returns, so I had to throw Zach McPherson out there. That doesn't do him uh, – that does him a little bit of disservice. He hasn't done it since high school. But having all these possible punt returns allows them to get some film, get some feel. Because, again, some guys coming from college, it's a different type of animal out there. So them to get as many reps as, as possible. But Britton Covey, what he's done the last couple of years as an undrafted free agent then a second-year guy to lead the league in yards and be up there in average, you know, Kudos to him, and he just keeps getting better and better. And you know his his mindset as a as a returner is something that you re you rarely see outside of those explosive guys. So Covey, you know, he, I'm very happy to have Britton Covey on our. Draft picks, what was Magic getting done with kick and punt returns because of the newness of it compared to previous years uh, in practice sessions? And uh, does that allow for you know because you have more talent to have more of a sample size for each guy? Yeah, I think. You know, to get good at it, you got to do it. So in practice, we may be doing a little bit more team-based thing against each other to see what it looks like then, you know, in preseason seeing that. But, again, what are the what are the percentages like? Was there a huge difference from the 25 to the 30, you know, to the 20 in terms of all of that? So, again, the more times we practice it, the better we're going to get at just like in anything else in life. The more stuff you practice, the better you're going to get at it. So the more times we can put it on tape, correct it, get better from it, I think it's going to help us. Both kickoff return and kickoff coverage. With the uh, the extensive return experience, talking about uh, Cooper, Will, and Anias, what stands out about each of them as a returner? Yeah, I think they all excel in all different phases. Um, Cooper does, you know, he's just a heck of an athlete. Obviously, you guys have seen his basketball highlight tape surface around. This guy's just a a really good football player. Hard to find good football players in in general. So Cooper, you know, he's a smooth runner. Um, able to track the ball as a punt returner. And you saw, you know, he has the ability to take it all the way. Then, you know, Anias, you know, he's splashy, explosive. When he gets the ball in his hands, it's really dynamic in terms of that. Then with Will, I mean, Will, you see from a running back perspective, then to a kickoff return perspective, he's downhill. He's one cut. He still got enough wiggle to make you miss. And that was evident in the uh, rookie minicamp, just seeing those guys kind of move around. Um, for the first time live in person outside of the film. It's just something exciting to look forward to when they get back here and, and mingle in with the veterans. What's the, the most interesting, what's the most interesting question you've gotten from the players on, about kickoff returns and what kind of feedback have you gotten from them? I don't know if interesting. I think it's more curiosity in terms of the questions. And a lot of it has to do with the new rules, you know, the touchback rule, where the ball has to land, how do, where do we line up at. And I think it's just a learning curve for everything. You know, you get so, you know, the last few years it was this. And, you know, last year they added the fair catch. So you got to teach them that. So now everything moved up. It's just something different they haven't seen. So it's just more of them being curious to what they expect to see. Um, so I don't know if there's anything super outlandish or uh, question wise, but it's just more of the curiosity of like, hey, what are the, what are the, the, the ruling and how, do, how are we going to use this to an advantage? The NFL was going through the rule changes. How much did you lend your voice? How much do you feel like your opinion ended up uh, into what happened? Yeah, I mean, I think throughout the NFL, they look for our input. And, I, you know, Darren Rizzi, John uh, Bonesy, and, and Richard Hightower, I thought they did an unbelievable job of representing us as NFL coaches, special teams coaches. And we have, you know, we're able to communicate through them. So when they do go out and try to present it, they're able to present our thoughts. So I think it's been a collective effort effort from all 32 teams. What are your thoughts? My thoughts on the whole thing? Entering it? You know. My thoughts going, you know, as long as we're on the same sounding board, I'm all for whatever they want to give out there. Um, 
not saying like I didn't have anything to say or anything disagreeing. It was like, hey, I was with everyone. We all voted on ourselves in our own little little group and everything. So whatever the NFL is ready to pull on board, we're ready to to adapt. That's what special teams is. It's all about it adapting to, to new things, whether it's a roster change or new rules, we're ready to adapt in the special teams world. Is there a player or two that you're looking to, looking to to make a big leap here in 2024, and who are you leaning on for leadership? Yeah, um, I think we've had a couple of players that do have some experience. I would say like Zach Bond and Oren Burks, they've played in the league for a while, and they've played at a high level. Um, but like I usually tell everyone, I, I lean on everybody. If you really look back from last year, we leaned on rookies, undrafted rookies, veteran guys, guys coming off practice squad. It's my job as a coach, as a coordinator here, to make sure all 90 guys are ready uh, and willing to play special teams. So I'll lean on everyone, but we saw some outstanding play from Josh Job, Sidney Brown last year, Ben Van Sumeren. Um, but it's going to be a collective effort, and I think you know those guys getting a year under their belt have more confidence they'll take it on their own to be leaders and i ain't got i don't have to really worry about that um because i think this is a very good a very good unit in terms of holding each other accountable and you know pushing each other to to a new level with jake brayton and rake all being extended now having that how much easier does it make for your job as a coordinator that you can focus other things down knowing that they've been extended yeah, it's always nice to have, you know, those three guys back, the continuity. Um, they did an unbelievable job last year. It all starts with Rick, then Braden did, a, did an unbelievable job coming in after week two and, you know, kind of just blending in, finding his groove. Then Jake is Jake. I mean, the last three years I've been here, he's been a, a an outstanding player, but it's always my job to try and push these guys to, to take it to another level um, to help this team out. But, again, having those three – together again and the continuity makes it easier and it makes the whole team feel pretty pretty confident knowing when they go out there they they've shown that they could produce at a high level so very exciting and well earned out of those three to to get those extensions in the iowa game did a cool call fair catch <laughs> <laughs> that's you can ask him that <laughs> the, the, yeah you can ask him that i got nothing for you <laughs> thank you thanks